Masi sondele, masi sondele, ah, pila no tolo, yelele. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's the countdown show again. I am Jalala Adishino and I have here with me. You're not dazzling, I'm not going to say that. I have here with me. <laughs> Abdul Hamid Halal VJ. And we're bringing you yet another episode of the countdown show. So today, inshallah, we have a lot in store for you. And we're starting with. Sirot. Sirot to Nabawija. That is a look into the story or history or lessons from the life of the prophets and his sahaba and all his companions so today the theme that we're going to be looking at from the sirah is humility how humble are you as much as people <laughs> don't <say>. lie <laughs> okay basically we want to learn lessons about humility from the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the person to take us through the sirah today is Ustaz Mubarak. So let's go ahead and learn about humility. And right after that, inshallah, we're going to be bringing you the big IQ show. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem Muhammadin al-ameen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd Brothers and sisters in Islam, we are welcome today to our Sira program Talking about lessons from the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And the noble companions who lived with him The good things he taught them and what they learned from him And how we can imbibe these lessons in our own life as Muslims and the first thing we're going to be talking about in this program is humility. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was known to be humble. The Sahabas called him the most humble person, the most humble person amongst all the Arabs in his time. The Prophet وسلم, would never allow anyone to bow in front of him as a form of respect. He would not allow the Sahabas to treat him as a king which he was, but he never showed differences while he was with his companions. If a stranger should come to see him amongst his companions, the stranger would not be able to tell the difference between him and his companions. He would ask, which amongst you is the noble Prophet Muhammad He was that humble and that simple. He never yelled at any of his servants. He never hit any of his servants. He never shouted at any of them. Two of his servants, Anas and Zaid, reported that the Prophet ﷺ, they spent years with him and he never made any negative comment about them. He never raised his voice on them and he never struck them with anything throughout their whole lives. He treated his wives the same with humility. And he was in charge of the wealth of the whole Muslims, yet he would not take anything for himself. Days would pass by and no food would be made in the Prophet's house because there is nothing to eat. He would wake up in the morning and ask his wife, what do we have for food this morning? And Aisha radiallahu anha would say, we have nothing in the house. And he would say, sallallahu alayhi wa then I would fast today. He was that humble and he would stay for days without food because there is nothing to cook in his house. And then he would laugh with his companions in matters in which they laughed about and he will also speak with them in the matters in which they discussed about and he would not belittle any one of them and he usually say in one of his statements in a hadith he says Kun fi dunya ka aw abiru sabil. you should be in this life and live in this life as if you are a stranger or someone who is on a ride someone who is traveling and one day the companions came to him in his house and they met him lying down on a mat, dry mat, such that the marks made by the mat on his body could be seen easily. And they were surprised. They said, oh, Prophet Muhammad, why do you lay on such a mat? If you like, we could make you a very comfortable bed that you can sleep. 
and he said, Ma li walid dunya. He said, What do I have in this world? Illa karakib, except like a rider, someone who is on a journey. Istadhalla tahta shadra, who is resting under a tree, thumma raha wa tarakaha. And then after a while, he wakes up and leaves that tree and continues his journey. So the humility of the Prophet Muhammad sallam, he taught his companions to be simple and humble. And we could see this in the companion Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. When he became the Khalifa after the Prophet Muhammad sallam, Umar radiallahu anhu will observe him. After Salatul Isha in certain days, he would go out of his way and walk in the dark to somewhere Umar didn't know. So one day, Umar followed him and wanted to know where he was going. And Umar discovered he went to the hut, the house of an old woman helped her milk her goats and cows, helped her clean her house. And Umar met the old woman and asked her, do you know who this man is? The old woman said, I don't know him. He usually comes to help me. And Umar said, that is the leader of the Muslims. And the same with Umar radiallahu anhu. He would travel to Jerusalem and then he would allow his slave to climb the camel for a while and he climbed the camel for a while as a sign of humility. The Prophet taught them well and they learned well from him. And humility and humbleness is one of the characteristics of the people of paradise. The Prophet said, if you want to be with me in paradise, then you should be humble and not arrogant. Arrogance is something we desist from in Islam. Thank you very much for joining us and I hope you've learned a lot about humility today in Islam from the life of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam and some of his companions. See you again for another good quality and lesson we can learn on the Sira series in this program. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Maria Abugiwa and I'm on the Big IQ show. What is the word that Jal means? Five seconds. Five seconds. Okay, the Jal is the one I beat that will be coming like before 20 circles back, right? They call it Antichrist or something. Jaliya prayers. Where would you most likely find the Muhammad? In the Masjid? I don't know. First pillar of Shahada, what does it mean? Yeah, first pillar of Shahada is testifying that Allah is God, like Laila Laila now. Yeah, that's the read. Yeah, I guess. Laila, Ilala. It's called I believe in Allah. In five seconds, give me the English meaning of this word. Fast. Charity, yeah. To do it. So that prayer. N A D A M A R. God. Dot. Is it over? What's the opening line of the other? What's the opening line of the other? I love Aguar. Can you introduce yourself in the It's me, Mariam Abdullah um, I think that's what I can do. What are the stories about Muhammad saying the Rahman said? Adit. What is your name? Mariam. M A Y R A M. Say thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Habibi, halal, habibi, 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 halal, habibi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Guess what? This is not accident. It's actually something big, something awesome.
fresh this year. Out TV Africa and New Crusade International Travels will bring you our experience. And yes, you can be a part of this awesome experience. All you need to do is to register with New Crusade International Travels for this year's arch. And trust, I'll be your presenter and tour guide, taking you around the historical city of Mecca and Medina and bringing you the event that forms the art rights. This is the first of its kind in Nigeria, and I hope you come along with us on this adventure of endless reward. And guess what? You have the opportunity of saying shout out to your loved ones in Nigeria and all over the world. Our TV Africa Ad Experience is brought to you by New Crescent International Travels. For more information, you can call this number on your screen. I will pray to Almighty Allah to make this year's Ad Haja Maburan, Wazamba Makfuran, Wasahya Mashkuran, Wahamala Mutakobala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Habibi, halal, habibi, 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 halal, habibi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Sound Sultan, musician, and I'm on the Big IQ show. Orlan Rewaji Abdul Gani, Fasas. I S A S I A S. I don't make account. Send my love. It's not my favorite, but what I take most is rice. Um, that's the easiest thing to just grab. Anambra Abia Adamawa. Baja. Baja. Secret talent, right? That's why very few people know about it. Why must I tell you? I cook well. I, I might pick two. Um, Surate, Fatia, and then Baka. Why? Fatia, of course, is the opener, is the main one, is the, is the sure one that uh, conquers anything at any time. It's key. And uh, Baka has a lot of verses inside that I put to use. I could see, you know, my college out and all this one. Of course, every time. I just feel uh, when you go come, you go come. You know, but sometimes you just look at it like that is the that is what keeps people grounded. That's what keeps people. At the end of the day, if we, if we no go die, I would this one for me. Bad habit. I like to choose strong. Ah, salamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's me. I'll be again. Ah, we get new for that. Ah, it means a lot. I mean. To every believer and every Muslim, you know that's like a thousand lines in one. The blessing is unquantifiable, and that's why, since we we don't know which one is the night of Majesty, we just make sure that the last ten days you are always on your feet. You grab all the the ladder you can get. Really, for sure. That's the last obligation. <laughs> this is funny. Yeah. No pain, no gain. <laughs> the British accent, I believe. No pain, no gain. Eat me up, eat me up in the afternoon. <laughs> Maybe I had a little now. <laughs> my, my calf muscles are so so going. <laughs> Going to the eh, eh, my car muscles are so so going to the gym. <laughs> Let's make this an internet internet me. <laughs> I have an awful car. Uh, his bed was on fire. Fire. <laughs> Yo, 
your charge your charge eh your charge why i don't put the mark then i'm going to charge you a charge you there drop me like wow some of them backwards n a g a n a n e r hello everybody my name is sound sultan and uh, i'm on rtv africa keep watching rtv africa ramadan kazim you came to me the time of welcome back um i'm sure you guys enjoyed that lesson from the zero obviously we always learn from the life of the prophets and i think we should all be a bit more humble now and the big iq show that was just awesome and amazing yeah awesome and amazing yeah sure. introduce yourself in arabic me everybody knows i'm a scholar now <laughs> sure okay i'm joking no. let me just try okay let me just try okay well ismi abdul hamid ana talib fi jami'at al lagus wa uhibbu talab al ilm wa ba'd al ashya ba'd dhalik oh god translate uh, is it too much okay basically i just said i'm shouldn't be abdul hamid i'm a student in university of lagos I'm in year five, and I love studying, learning stuff. Who loves studying? People like us. It depends on what you're studying, anyway. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, if you're just joining us, you're still on the countdown show, and we're looking at our theme for today, which is struggling with stereotypes. So, Sister Jalala, have you ever had any personal experience? about being victimized for being a muslim or based on what people say generally stereotypes well it wasn't such a bad experience but it was um as a result of the fact that I'm a muslim girl wearing hijab i entered a restaurant in in school one day and there was only two people inside they were sitting at um, the table at the end and i just entered i overheard the guy telling the girl beside him that i'm scared of these people that cover their head wow. and i heard so I didn't say anything. I just smiled, walked over to the table, and he banged my hand on the table. You are scared, huh? <laughs> and he busted. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, it was funny. They just busted into laughter. We became friends there and then. Okay, so, yeah, because the was, kind of society we're in, people hear a lot of bad things, and yeah. they don't even take any step to cons to verify or stuff like that. You just take it like that. I mean, if you see a brother anywhere that is. With his shorts not touching the ground or something, or has beard like very, or he's wearing like a jalamia or you something get like that. Like Osama bin Laden. Or you terrorist. start getting scared that he's a terrorist, <laughs> things like that. We need to be informed. We need to be aware that Muslims are nothing like that. I need to see the weird eyes that people, look, the way people look at you when they see you with beard or you see you wearing hijab. So we just need to learn how to handle the situations diplomatically. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the, that's the major. Don't that's the key get too so angry. Be patient and talk to them. Speak yeah, because the you that would, you can speak with you would course. always encounter things like this. Yeah. And if you lose your mind in one incident, it will have, it will happen over and over again. And by the time you do something wrong, that is the tag that's that the you end. use for everybody. Oh, that Muslim. Muslim. <laughs> ah, no, no, no. He fought in public. <laughs> ah, we saw him and he was just killing everybody. No. Is that really? what someone told you? No, as in, I, that's why I really personally, I avoid any kind of encounter, especially when I have my Islam look going on or something like that. I don't want my religion to be tagged for anything I do or something like that. So please, everybody, let's try and avoid stereotypes, basically, and also keep yourself in check whenever you're being harassed. I don't think we can avoid the stereotypes. Deal with it. Okay, yeah, deal with it. I think that's better. So we got a few statements from different people concerning this theme, and let's just go outside and hear what they have to say about it.
Uh, personally, such thing have never happened to me, but I've heard so many things like people will just come up to you that you are too matured, you are too nice or something to, to be a Muslim. But I think the world is evolving and everything is changing. People are now more matured and they are now attached to their feet. So I think it is a thing of the past. It's evolving. Not at all. I'm, I have never for once doubted my religion. I'm always proud to be a Muslim. I've always been a Muslim from birth, so I've never had to be a Muslim. Once that happened, I left the job because I can't dis dispute my religion. But I find, I find a way of just calling that off because it causes too much argument and, and it, can, it might even cause chaos between, between me and that person. So I don't do that. I'm very happy to be a Muslim because Muslim is actually the way of life. Islam is the way of life. So I'm very happy to be a Muslim. Um, ever since existing, that has always been a major problem in the society. Whereby people will be like, uh, are you a Muslim, are you a Christian? But I still stand firm on my own religion. I'm a Muslim. I was born in Muslim and inshallah I'll die Muslim. I uh, know. That hasn't happened to me. I'm a Muslim and I've always been proud to be a Muslim anywhere I go. Sometimes you, 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 you get uh, uh, you get naive of being a Muslim sometimes when you get some when something happened or sometimes you might you, 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 you may not want to show, showcase your Islam probably because of circumstances but all in all I appreciate being a Muslim and that's why you see me keeping beard though there are so many issues ah, why are you keeping beard now this beard is not is not making you to, to look good you are still young why, why are you keeping beard so, such such questions do come so many times and somebody, and somebody will tell you why, why, you been, why do you be, as in your character is too good to be a Muslim? Why can't you just change your character? As if Islam is not the one that has the best of character. So people have changed what Islam is. So they, have, they thought Islam is just all about bombing or doing some other things that is not Islamic. But Islam is all about good character. And that was why Prophet Salam was, was told, he was describing the Quran of being the best character. Not for any other thing. Not for observing Salat, but of what? Of good character. No, um, the question is relative also. We can't say yes and we can't say no. Because, okay, fine, I will say you can't say yes because anybody can take up, anybody can take up wearing hijab or wearing a hub without having the correct perspective about it or without being having the fear, um, without having, we have to be, be so cautious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we can't say no because for somebody taking up hijab, it means the person will have like, ah, like make a conclusion or make a kind of decision that okay fine in my society I want to stand around wear hijab I want to be unique I don't want to be I don't I want to dress like the way Allah Subhanahu wa Taala commanded me to do so it's, the question is 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 relative it's not like okay if you are wearing hijab it means you are more closer you are, you have Allah you are you are you are you are, more, you are cautious of Allah you are you have this piety you know so for someone fine if I wear hijab. Uh, it, it shows that I want to follow Allah's, Allah's injunction. It shows that I want to be, I'm, I'm more conscious of Allah. And for another person, like, ah, I'm just wearing hijab because people are wearing it. I'm wearing hijab because I'm wearing a cup because I feel it's good for me. I think if I should wear it, my husband will like it, my brother will like it. So it's, relative, it's a relative question, actually. Well, yes, yes. Different times, different places, yes. Yes. <laughs> You came to me the time So we just heard people sharing their experiences on how they've been dealing with stereotypes and different incidents that have been happening to them. Personally, as a Muslim, I don't really think I've had to encounter any serious issue like that concerning stereotypes. I'm very sure we all know why. No beards to show. <laughs> I'll take it like that. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> well, but basically, we all know that the essence is for us to be able to deal with all these kind of things and manage our situations in the best way we can. So inshallah, this is where we're going to be leaving you. I'm sure you've enjoyed everything we've brought for you so far, but know that we have so much more coming in the coming days. I remain Jalala additional. And I'm Abdul Hamid Halal Vijay. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.
Unseen. 